We're going to learn how to solve a uh, Rubik's Cube, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on that. Uh, start off with the uh, center pieces. Now there is uh, one per side, and uh, what you have to do is match all the other colors up to that. There's uh, six different center pieces total, or six uh, colors total. Now with the uh, center pieces, you have red corresponding to orange. There's red, and there's orange on the other side. Uh, you have yellow, which corresponds with white. Yellow corresponding with white. Uh, you also have uh, blue that uh, corresponds with green. So blue and uh, green will always be opposite sides of each other. You cannot move the pieces against their corresponding uh, center. What that means is uh, that color in the center has to be uh, part of the solution. Next we'll go ahead and uh, look at the edge pieces. And uh, each edge piece has two sides. Uh, that makes uh, 12 total, so there's 12 total edge pieces, uh, 8 of which we see, 4 of which we don't in this picture. And the edge pieces can move uh, quite a few different directions, as you can see from the arrow showing here. So there's quite a bit we can uh, do with those uh, edge pieces. Corner pieces, and each corner piece has 3 sides to it. Now there's 8 corner pieces total. Uh, we can't see all of them here, but we can see uh, 7 of the 8 uh, corner pieces. And uh, the important part about this is they much, must match the uh, center piece color. So you can see the uh, orange pieces right there, they match, and the green pieces on top, they uh, match as well. Whenever you see a diagram like this, consider the front, uh, the face of it, and then we move uh, from there. There are 12 different uh, quarter rotation turns that can be made. Uh, in our examples we have uh, basically six moves and uh, 12 different moves total because you can go up or down on or right or left on uh, each move and with all the different uh, types of moves available there's uh, many combinations what we're going to do going forward is look at uh, specific combinations you can use for specific situations uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started on that so uh, how exactly do we go about solving this well, we're going to start here and uh, then work our way to the end. Uh, by start here, I mean uh, the white piece in the center, and that's what we'll do in all of our examples here. I'll go from there, we'll build a uh, white cross, and then after that, what we're going to try to do is match up the corresponding center pieces with the uh, white cross. Uh, most scenarios, or most cases, it's not going to match. I'll show you how to match that up. And then we're going to complete the uh, four corners of the uh, white and uh, make sure they're obviously matching up. And then uh, it gets a little more difficult. We're going to get these uh, four uh, middle edge pieces uh, to match up there. And then after we have that, we're going to flip it around and uh, we're going to uh, solve for yellow. Uh, starting with the uh, yellow cross in the middle. Now, when we start off, it's not going to matter that the side pieces match. We'll, we'll take care of that at the end. And then after we get the uh, yellow cross or more in place, we will uh, cover the four corners of yellow. And then, uh, lastly but not least, we will uh, end up uh, using a, showing a sequence of moves that will get us to uh, solve uh, for the rest of it. Okay, our first goal is to get a uh, white cross. We're going to go ahead and uh, start working on it here. And as you can see, we got one more piece, so we're going to try to figure out how to do that. Oh, I can move this down here and move this piece across. And uh, there we have it. We have the uh, white cross, which is consisting of those pieces.
Now the next step we're going to have to do is make sure that these uh, match up, uh, which they don't uh, right there, and we'll go look about how we can do that. Okay, if you take a close look at this, you'll notice the we matched the red with the red, the blue with the blue. We haven't matched the green and the orange, or the orange and the green. Uh, so we're going to need this piece right here, probably to go down here and then work its way up there. So let's go ahead and try that. And we'll need this center piece right here to go all the way back over here. So we'll turn it twice that way. And now if you'll notice, uh, we have the same thing here. We have green matching green, red matching red, blue blue, and of course orange matching orange. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to have these two red pieces right here, the thumbs are on go on this side right here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip these around uh, like so and then we're going to turn them around twice and then we're going to have them go back on the other side and they should match up there while we've uh, maintained the integrity of this. So we have this side red uh, working there now if you'll notice on uh, this one, the uh, green and the blue are off. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this around and spin it and get it to where they matches up again. And then I just turn it uh, twice on the bottom there. And uh, put it back up there. Now I've got green, green, blue, blue. If you look closely, you'll notice there's a white piece here, and there's an open white spot there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off there to keep it off the rotation, and I'm going to turn this this way, and then I'm going to turn the white piece around twice. One, two, and uh, now I'm going to turn the white piece back. So now we have the uh, mini triangle there. Now that we have white solved and we have uh, these spots solved right here all the way around, what we're going to need to do is uh, flip it like we have and we're going to have to find uh, one of the corresponding colors. So we have green there and let's see, we have green right here. Now if you notice on top of green is the orange piece and if you look closer you'll notice orange is on this side. So uh, I'm going to give you the formula for moving green orange to here and I'm also going to give you the formula for moving green let's say uh, red let's say we had a green red piece moving green red to that spot right there congratulations on getting this far now for the tricky part what you got to do is you got to put this top piece uh, in this case we have a green piece and we're going to try to match it up with the uh, corresponding edges uh, which can be to the left or to the right. Um, in the picture I have here, it's it's red, so it's going to want to go to the right. But let's say you have an orange piece, you're going to want to move it to the left. Let's take a look at the sequence of moves you'd go for the left, and that's going to involve uh, these eight corresponding moves right here. You're going to want to turn the top right, uh, turn the left up, turn the top left, turn the left down, turn the top left, turn the face right, turn the top right, and then turn the face to the left. And that will get you uh, that piece where the arrow is showing right there. Now alternatively, if you want to move the piece to the right, uh, you would do this sequence of moves where you have the top goes left, the right goes up, the top goes right, the left, or the right goes down, the top goes right, the face goes left, the top goes left and then the face goes right and that will move your piece to the right as shown by the arrow there. Okay we are going to move this piece from here to here using uh, the formula I just showed you.
And uh, there we go. We moved this piece uh, to right there like we wanted. And you can basically uh, do that uh, for the rest of the pieces uh, we're showing right here. And I'm going to spare you the trouble, but as long as you know the formula, you should be able to do that on your own. Now that uh, we have completed uh, all four bottoms here, we get to go to the fun part, and that is uh, completing the uh, yellow cross. So we'll have to have it going like this, and obviously uh, matching up against the uh, corresponding colors, which it's not doing right now. Congratulations on uh, completing the bottom two layers. Now we get to go ahead and uh, go to the next step, which is completing the yellow cross. And to do this, I'm going to show you uh, two different uh, series of moves. Each uh, series of moves consists of six moves. And uh, you can set that up however you want. Uh, just make sure your face is the uh, right side. And uh, then go ahead and, and do that until you have a yellow cross. Now that the yellow cross is complete, we just need to fill in these uh, four corners right here with the uh, yellow pieces. Now that uh, you've completed the yellow cross, uh, you're probably going to have uh, one of uh, three different scenarios. This being the first, this being the second, uh, there's a third scenario. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this part where the hand is right here for the face. And I'm going to show you eight different moves that you can uh, use. Remember to use the part where the hand is uh, for the face. And uh, that will uh, help you solve for the rest of this. Uh, just keep working uh, side by side until you have uh, the yellow part complete. Congratulations! Now you solve for the top of the yellow layer and all you need to do is figure out how to uh, complete these uh, sides here to get the uh, corners to match. In this case uh, we have red, we want to match the red with the red and we're going to use the uh, corresponding uh, moves I've shown on the top left hand corner of your screen. There's quite a few of them. Uh, try to make sure you do them right otherwise you know you can start over uh, from wherever you left off at. Now uh, after we have this uh, matched up we're going to want to move that color. It doesn't necessarily have to be red. It could be a different color. We're going to move it to the back and then uh, that's going to be our new uh, front side. The, or the back uh, in the picture here is going to be our new front side. And uh, you know it could be red, it could be blue, it could be orange, it could be green. We're going to move that to the back side and then we're going to repeat this process over these uh, sequence of moves here until we have all four corners matching up. Now that we've uh, solved for the corners, we just need to uh, go ahead and uh, solve for the uh, middle parts being right here, here, and uh, here. And I'll go ahead and uh, walk you through how you do that. Now that we have the uh, four corners solved, we just need to solve the edges. Uh, you're going to probably look at one of two scenarios, one where none of the edges match, uh, the other where one of the four edges uh, matches. I'll show you how to solve for both of them. Uh, first off, um, there's the clockwise method and there's the counterclockwise method. Now, the only difference between the counterclockwise and the clockwise method is what I've highlighted in yellow there. Uh, one goes to the left, the other goes to the right. Now, uh, if you have the top scenario where none of the edges match, uh, you can use either the clockwise or counterclockwise method to uh, solve uh, for the, that. And then uh, you're going to have one of the edges that match afterwards. And in that scenario, uh, you're going to have to figure out which way uh, to go. You're going to have the, the matching edge is going to be toward the back. And then you're going to have to figure out which way the colors need to go. Do they need to go clockwise or they, do they need to go counterclockwise? Now that uh, we are nearing the end, we just need to move these pieces uh clockwise, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to put the uh, finishing touches here. Remember to put this side to the back. And there we have it. We have completed the Rubik's Cube. Uh, congratulations and uh, thank you for watching.